CYC is a free channel presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In this episode of sexual addiction, we are going to talk about very important issue. Why do people get addicted to sex? Why? Reasons. This is very important because that will help us to protect our kids. Wherever, in the Sunday school, in the church, our kids and a family from going through this. One study found that 80% of recovering sex addicts report some type of addiction in their families of origin. We talked about that before, if you remember, when we, are, when we were talking about the uh, indicators, the 20 characteristics. But this is very important. Sometimes one of the parents or some of the family members, one of the family members, or some, having this kind of sexual addiction, which may affect our kids. That's why I told you the study said 80% of the recovering sex addicts, they figured out that they have family issues about sex. Addicts use sexual activity to seek pleasure avoid unpleasant feelings, or respond to outside stressors. How do they do that? You know, we are all working. So whatever the kind of work, it's stressful. Some of us, because of their not dependent, the independence on God, they depend on themselves. How they receive this stress. How do they react? Firstly, they think about sex. Because thinking about sexual relation sometimes heal the situation because I'm talking to someone else. But unfortunately, it's not the right person and by not the right way, not by the right way. So if you pick someone to talk to you have to know who is this person, not to be sexual addiction. That's why sometimes it's a kind of relief from stress, especially at work. Or to feel that pleasure because I'm always depressed because of what's going on around my life. Work, family, kids, <laughs> all that stuff. That's why from the early beginning, if you know how to face your stress, how to solve it, you will not be under that condition. Because there is a mechanism to deal with your stress. So can you deal with your stress? If you know how to deal with your stress, you will not be in this kind of addiction. Children of broken families may grow into adults who cannot distinguish between what's acceptable and what's not. At this point, I want to talk about two things. Number one, the broken families. Many of the parents, with all respect to the different situations, the first door, they knock on this door, which is divorce. When they have any problem, whatever the problem. And I'm saying again, with all respect to the different problems and different situations. I know it's very hard, but by that way, you are not thinking about your kids. Because many of the kids, they don't understand what's acceptable and what's not. So what's happening? That we have sexual addicts. Especially if the system between the parents, before being divorced or during their life, is like aggressiveness, hitting each other, cursing, and so on, so on, so on. 
This kind of bad relation gives a translation to the kids about this kind of relation. It's not something good. I have to be out of this. So how each one pick whatever the way. Something else about the children. Sometimes we deliver a message to our kids which is not good about their physical appearance. Many of the parents just focus on that. Focus especially for girls and for boys also. For girls, when she is by the age of 12 or 13, till the, mid till the high school, that you're beautiful, your hair, you're good looking. So what I'm translating now, I'm giving her that this is the way by which she can attract people. How do people will tell her you are good? From her physical appearance. And for the boy, the muscles. I'm not saying not to say that. Say it. But in balance with the impersonality. I love your way of thinking. I admire your organization. I feel your honesty. Your spirituality is great. You see, there is complete difference between this terminology and the other physical one. By that way, I am going to make a balance in all our kids about how to deal with their self-esteem, to be confident with my personality, not with my muscles or with my hair and and like makeup and so and so and so and that's why I'm going to translate this message or deliver this message to them in a good way not in a bad way the message simply is you are attracted and people are attracted to your personality so you are not going to think about grabbing people around you just because of my physical appearance in this third point, why do people get addicted? Because of families, broken families, or families having these concepts and these messages to deliver, which is only, only physical appearance. It's not only. Biological reasons, endorphins and enkephalins, these are like chemicals in the brain. Sometimes we use medication that enhance and stimulate these chemicals in our brain. That's why we need to watch the medication we are taking. Psychological reasons. The escape. And this is one of the most popular reasons for sexual addiction. I am escaping from the stress. I want to escape from home because of my wife. I want to escape from home because of my husband. I want to escape from my home because of my parents. I want to escape. One of the escaping techniques is to know someone else to help me to escape. And then, sexual addiction. And you have to know that all these psychological reasons will not be healed in seconds will not be healed just to leave the relation and stop it. No. It's hard. Because you don't know how to deal with your stress. And because you are dealing with your stress in a bad way, that's why you are in this sexual addiction. Spiritual reasons. And I want to end this episode by spiritual reasons because it really, this is the main point. Don't think it's the matter of watching or so and so. When you are away from God, when you are away from the church, when you are not talking to God, because simply our relation with God, whom we love, is like talking and listening. So if you want to talk to God, pray. If you want to listen to God, read the Bible. Simply. Any conversation between any two, one-to-one -one communication, is talking and listening. So pray and read the Bible, talking and listening. This kind of relation between you and God and the spiritual supports 
the fasting, the church, the service, servants at the church, and your spiritual doctor, the priest, father of confession, all that protect you from going through this kind of addiction specifically. Because when you are going to start doing something wrong, you remember all that. You are alert. You always have a wake-up call once there is something wrong happening. Spirituality, the sexual addict may use his or her addiction in place of true spirituality. I want to tell you something. For the sexual addict, you know what happening? Sex is your God. Now, you made a replacement. Don't replace God. And that's why I'm always telling you, with God, with Him, you can overcome your sin. But try to make this strict follow-up between you and your father of confession and the church as close as you can. That will help you not to go through this track. In our next episode, we are going to have an interview with a guy. You are going to see this story. How he got, he got through this and how he got saved. Again, with him, overcome sin. God bless all of you. Looking forward to seeing you in our next episode. Thank you very much.